Welcome back. Yes, welcome. So we just got a comment, which awesome comment, by the way. It took me forever to read, but it sparked a question for me. So I thought some of you guys might have the same question. It mentioned that in the business that he worked for, they had, was it called a pod and rail pod CNC? And rail CNC. Yep. Versus a nesting CNC. And based off of my understanding, I believe it's nesting because Tyler talks about nesting parts and putting them together and using cabinet vision and VCAM and all sorts of different things. So I thought that would be a great opportunity to talk about the difference between a nesting CNC, which I assume this is. It is. And a pod and rail CNC. Yep, let's do it. So yeah, behind us, this is this is Larry. Larry is a nested base CNC. So a nested base CNC basically means that you put an entire sheet of material on it. And once you put that sheet on, then the program actually sets to drill all the holes, do all the operations, and then it cuts all the parts out on the table, the flat table itself. And what a pot and rail machine is, is you cut the parts in a different location on a, on a beam saw or on a table saw. And then once those parts are cut, then you have to, you have to do the operations. You have to drill your shelf pin holes, any construction bore holes, those all still have to be bored. And because you didn't cut them out on the CNC, and you've cut them out on a, on a table saw, if you will, um, whether it's a small one or, or a large format one, then you have to take that part and put the operations in it. And so um, the a pod and rail CNC actually looks similar to this, but it doesn't have this, this spoil board. You can see the, the MDF surface right here. It doesn't have that surface on it. And it has literally a pod, a vacuum pod. And that pod will suck the part down. So it has little little pins that pop up for reference. You put the part down on, it sucks the piece down, and then you can drill your holes, put dados, things like that. Now, our vertical CNC is actually a form, I guess, or it does similar things to the pod and rail machine, uh, and we're, we're going to do a full review on that machine. Uh, it'll be exciting, uh, but it, that's kind of what it does. So from, from what I gather, basically you would take a finished part that was cut on the saw, mm -hmm. and that's where, well, let's just grab one. Hopefully I don't mess up. This one looks good. <laughs> Grab one with some operations. Heck yeah. So imagine that this came off the CNC without, without, or, these holes. without these holes. And basically you would put it on a pod CNC and it would drill like the back piece and the shelf pin stuff and the assembly holes. Correct. But it doesn't cut it the doesn't shape cut of it. Out. So the shapes cut out on the saw, all the operations, the pinholes, the construction board, and the dado, that's all done on the pod and rail machine. Can the pod and rail, because you have like, it's an ABD, is that what it's called? Correct. Which will do ones on the side. Does a pod, can it go on the side or is it just top? Some of them can. It depends on which which one it is. So they have like Some a five access or something? Yeah, and I don't know that's really, um, it's not really considered a five axis, but they'll put aggregates on. It'll be more like a C, a, C axis like um, like this machine has, and then you can drill on the side. So, in short, you cut, like you have a beam saw. We do. Why, why did you go with a nesting CNC rather than a pot? I feel like nesting is a little more automated and here's why and, you, and i may have some arguments for this um because people say oh hey yeah you can uh, on a cnc or on a beam saw you can stack four or five sheets cut a whole bunch of parts um but there's a lot of thought that goes into the operators they have to do certain things and they do have some automated saws that'll show you you know how to position parts and how to do them but they come off and they have to go to another machine and i just feel like that uh, the other thing is it's not lean in my opinion like this on these nested base CNC's, all the parts are cut. We keep them cut in small groups and those come off. We process the whole thing and they get done. We're on a saw really to gain production speed. You have to stack material. Well, then you're getting piles and piles of parts. I don't think that's lean. So I guess my interpretation of that is that with a pot and beam, it can be potentially faster just because you're cutting multiple layers of wood at the same time. But at the same time, there's, it sounds like there's also a potential for more waste. 
and there's more potential for errors because there's more manual movement. There's more, you have to decide where it goes or how it turns or which way it goes. Plus, there would be really no way to do one piece flow. It's a lot harder. With pot and beam. It's definitely a lot harder. It's definitely not, there's always a way. (laughs) There is. And there's great shops and they're good machines. And, and depending on, like if you were doing a different product, if you were doing a product, it was the same thing over and over and over again, then it may make sense to do that. Yeah, if you weren't, I guess, so custom. Correct. Um, so one thing that's reminding me, I don't know if I should mention their name, but you used to work for a company that I thought, didn't they have one of those pod and beam? Like it was a massive, like... Yeah, they had a pod and rail machine. They still do. Um, so why, why do you think they have a pod and rail versus... I know theirs is really fancy because doesn't it also move the wood inside automatically? It doesn't actually. Oh. No, it just you just. I, I was mean, a lot younger then. You would take <laughs> it, you would literally take it in and put a piece there. It would bore it, and then you pull the piece out. You can you can do what's called pendulum processing. So you can do one side, it'll start processing that side, and you can walk into the other side and put another part. So you can kind of be doing two at a time. Um, but yeah, it, it, theirs was not automated. So why they have some really cool ones that are. Why do you think they do that? Like, why do you think that they went with that? That's a good question. Um, I've asked the owner of that company a few times, and and that's just the way he likes to do things. So, but uh, me personally, for our business, I think the nested base machines work better. They flow better for us. Plus, I feel like the nested base machines are a little more versatile. You can cut out shapes and all, you know, different things uh, a lot simpler. Uh, we do a lot of custom products that aren't just standard cabinetry. And so we're able to do those on these nested machines. So I guess with a pot and beam, can you cut like an arch shape? You can, can but you, you kind of have to dust cut it. So you have to, you can't, you know, you don't want to just cut a big arch off and have the, have the piece drop down. You'll end up chipping wood and doing everything like that. So you have to leave like a thin layer that you then post process. No, you, well, you could, yeah, you could do that, or you have to essentially take every bit of the wood off, go back and forth, and shave it, turn it all into dust, the whole thing. That would be terrible. So, yeah, so we like this one. <laughs> yeah. Any other main things that you think people should know? I think that really answers my question from an outside perspective. It definitely, if I were given the options, I would probably go with a nesting. Mm-hmm. But any other key points features no they're all great machines obviously you gotta gotta look at what's best for you um we've chosen the nested and i think they're fantastic so and like you said the vertical is like a pot and beam we'll do a full video on that one pot and rail pot and rail pot and beam (laughs) he has a beam saw too we'll do a video on that so if you guys have questions about them leave them down in the comments and thanks for watching